Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist. I have been in practice at the Texas Medical Center for more than three decades. Let us learn something about uh, endocarditis prophylaxis. Who needs endocarditis prophylaxis? What are we trying to protect and how do we accomplish that? So let us begin. The most common cause of endocarditis from a dental, oral, respiratory or an esophageal procedure is by strep viridens which is of an alpha hemolytic type. A variety of antibiotics like amoxicillin, ampicillin, penicillin V are equally effective against uh, alpha hemolytic streptococcus. Let's look at candidates who are at high risk for endocarditis who need endocarditis prophylaxis. Patients with prosthetic aortic valve are at very high risk for development of endocarditis during an instrumentation or a procedure. Similarly, patients who already had history of infective endocarditis and certain congenital heart diseases like the ones which are unrepaired cyanotic congenital heart diseases. The other group is a repaired congenital heart disease but that has a prosthetic material inside the heart or a repaired congenital heart disease with residual defects at or near a prosthetic patch. And finally, cardiac transplant recipients with prosthetic cardiac valves are at very high risk for development of endocarditis. Now let's look at some other systems where endocarditis prophylaxis may or may not be necessary. Let's look at the respiratory tract procedures. Routine antibiotic prophylaxis is not recommended for patients with bronchoscopy unless there is a biopsy involved. Similarly, antibiotic prophylaxis is recommended for invasive respiratory tract procedures that involve incision, biopsy or manipulation of the mucosal tissues, for example, in a case of tonsillectomy or adenoidectomy. Again, high risk cardiac patients who are undergoing surgical procedures involving the skin structures muscular skeletal system should receive antibiotic prophylaxis against beta hemolytic streptococci. If a causative agent is suspected to be staphylococcus instead of the usual strep viridens, then we should administer antibiotics that are suitable to staphylococcal infections, either using penicillin, cephalosporins, or vancomycin. Routine use of uh, antibiotic prophylaxis is not recommended for patients undergoing genitourinary or gastrointestinal tract procedures. Orthopedic guidelines. In January of 2015, the ADA clinical practice guidelines came up with the statement that in general for patients with prosthetic joint implants, prophylactic antibiotics are not recommended prior to dental procedures to prevent any prosthetic joint infection. That is to say, people who are going dental workup who have prosthetic joints do not routinely need antibiotic prophylaxis. A question arises, what if a patient is already taking an antibiotic for some other reason? In those cases, the dentists recommend using an antibiotic of a different class, a different class other than the one the patient is already taking. For example, if the patient is taking amoxicillin, then the dentist would select something like clindamycin, zithromycin, uh, clarithromycin for endocarditis prophylaxis. Now let's look at some of the standard medications and doses recommended by the American Medical Association, the American Dental Association and the American Heart Association and the 
American College of Cardiology. All antibiotics should be administered as a single dose, preferably 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure. Even in case you just forget to give the antibiotics, they can be still effective as long the dose is administered within the first two hours after the procedure. The standard recommendation is amoxicillin 2 grams by mouth 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure or if they are not able to take it by mouth, we can use ampicillin 2 grams IV or intramuscularly 30 minutes before the procedure. If the person is allergic to penicillin, we have a choice of clindamycin given as 600 milligrams orally as one dose or cephalaxin 2 grams by mouth. We can also consider zithromycin or clarithromycin in a dose of 500 milligrams once 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure. Patients who are allergic to penicillin and who are not able to take medications by mouth, we have a choice of clindamycin 600 milligrams given intravenously as a single dose or cefazolin or ceftriaxone 1 gram IV or intramuscularly. We should avoid using cephalosporins in patients with a history of uh, immediate type hypersensitivity to penicillin allergy such as urticaria, angioedema or anaphylaxis. Here is a chart which summarizes the things that we have already talked about. If they can take oral medication, this would be the best option that is to use amoxicillin 2 grams by mouth and here are the pediatric doses and if they are not able to take by mouth then we can substitute that with uh, ampicillin 2 grams IV or intramuscularly and similarly we go down the line and you can follow this particular regimen which is recommended by the American Dental Association and the American Heart Association. As I told you, uh, these are all the standard recommendations by the American Dental Association and the American Heart Association and in fact they provide a little pamphlet uh, on which you can write down the patient's name, the diagnosis along with uh, your name and contact information and the date to let the dentist know that this patient uh, may be at high risk for development of endocarditis and hence may need appropriate antibiotic prophylaxis for certain procedures. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief summary of uh, endocarditis prophylaxis in various uh, groups of patients and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist. We will see you next time. Thank you.